And our first speaker today, this is someone that I work closely with over the past 12 months. He's a, a thought leader in the VDC, or virtual design construction space. And it is my true honor to welcome Jacob uh, Skrobo, Skrobocek to the stage. And uh, Jacob, please come on in from DPR. When I first heard the news, it left me so discouraged. But when I dove deeper, what I found was a story of hope and clarity on who we as an industry need to focus our efforts. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's set some context before we talk about finding Jose. Construction has proven to be an essential business and offers an incredible amount of opportunities with continual wage growth over time. Yet we can't fill all the positions. What's wrong with this industry? One out of four of all construction workers are older than 55, as Sid mentioned. These highly skilled folks are about to retire. And four out of 10 new workers are laborers, the least skilled, lowest level, entry level positions. The Bureau of Labor Statistics cites over 300,000 open construction jobs. And in 2023, we need to fill 546,000 additional jobs on top of the normal hiring pace. When surveyed, 61% of the nearly 15,000 construction companies indicated we have a severe or very severe skilled labor shortage. So this is a real issue. How are we gonna convince the next generation of builders to make a lifetime career in construction? More specifically, we're all out of a job if these folks in the field don't wanna do this anymore. Think about it for a minute. Why did we all choose to get into this business? I'm a visual learner, and it turns out a lot of other people are as well, 65% of the population. I chose construction because I wanted to be able to see <clears throat> what I was working on. Saying, I built that feels good. I wanted to learn faster and was attracted to apply my tech skills and use visuals as a path to learn, understand, and problem solve. Humans learn faster with visuals. We're able to retain 80% of what we see compared to 20% of what we, we hear. Human brains process visuals 60,000 times faster than text and can register 36,000 visual messages per hour. It's pretty incredible. So why do we get into this business? How many folks feel like visuals had something to do with it? So how do we take advantage of visuals to improve the construction business and attract more workers? By the way, Gen Z is super interested in STEM, but construction ranks at the bottom of the list of industries that they're interested in. Think back to when you were 18 years old. How easy would it have been for you to make a different choice? I've dedicated most of my career to the use of building information models to support the construction life cycle. Virtual design and construction unlocks the power of our ability to learn and comprehend data through visuals, and it fits seamlessly with my, within my life in 2023. It feels like I'm doing something exciting and relevant. But some view the use of the model as an optional add-on, a show not foundational to how we work, despite its industry-transforming potential. We've been working on creating these communities of virtual builders to extract the most value out of the work we put into the model and really start to measure VDC adoption. The reality is that VDC, VDC tools are front and center when winning work. And they're hugely impactful in connecting communities of virtual builders in the design and planning process, but we often let them fade in the background during actual construction. Think about an 18-year-old considering this as their career. How many people outside of our industry understand all the technology we use? How many people inside our industry, inside our own companies, understand all the exciting things we share at venues like this? The builders in the field need a connection to the visuals and data. They need that same connection within their community in the field. Now let me tell you about finding Jose. I received an excited email from my Autodesk account team about the top mobile model viewer at DPR. Bum, bum, bum. I'm sitting in my office in Austin, Texas, and I'm excited, y'all. Who is this superintendent? Are we going to be best friends? 
I scanned the email, located the name, and my heart sunk. The email read, the top mobile model viewer at DPR is Jose Rivera, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Felt like daggers. I know Jose Rivera very well. It's great news that someone that should be using the platform is using the platform, but it's terrible news that it's not a superintendent. Jose sits right behind me in Austin. He's a project executive. He's focused on life sciences and he's an exceptional advocate for VDC, but this seems to validate that what I do isn't making it past the interview. He's nowhere close to the field. So how does a project executive even look at a model on mobile that much? What I imagine is he's getting bored in meetings and he's just like using it as a fidget spinner and completely ruining our data. I want the top mobile model viewer to be in the field. That's crush, as we'd say in our SoCal office. We got to keep the stoke high. Okay, we can get past this. <clears throat> There's got to be you know, a relationship between the executive and the super. And so maybe the second highest mobile model viewer is somebody that Jose's working with, right? They're working together. There's this community between a project manager and a super based on transferring knowledge. I'll teach you the tech tools, you teach me how to build. And together they're really maintaining that customer relationship. What great looks like for a superintendent today is coming in the trailer, connecting with the owner in, in, in an owner's meeting, going on a job walk after the meeting, and I'm imagining Jose and this super are working together, showing the model to show uh, you know, field progress, identify issues that need resolution. And for a lot of my career, it's been, how do we get supers to use the model and all the construction progress documentation to help communicate to the owner and give everyone a feeling of calm that the project is going to deliver on time, that will be on budget, and it's going to serve the needs of the customer. It's not a lot of the time for a superintendent to do this, but it's been impactful. And I've used this as a benchmark for BDC adoption in the field, really because that's what I could see. It turns out I had the wrong Jose, and it turned out to be great news. Jose Guadalupe Medina Rivera, the right top model viewer at DPR, is an hourly craft worker on the tallest tower in Texas, just down the street. It was such a nice surprise when I found out the right Jose, especially the clarity it brought. It helped shape a new vision for how we're going to achieve our, our goals for VDC adoption in the field and attracting the next generation of superintendents. In reality, 70% of the super's time is spent supporting the field. <clears throat> Those meetings with customers are important. But are we providing tools and deliverables that enhance communication with the, within the community they spend a majority of their life in? How much of that 70% could be made more efficient, more effective, taking full advantage of a connected construction platform? The aha moment was that if we surround the superintendents with craft workers like Jose, we can, can make the connections to visuals and data from the model a habit for 100% of their work life. So what caused the massive spike in viewer usage from Jose? To answer that, we need to understand what we've done for craft holistically. DPR has dedicated resources to focus on taking care of craft. This includes improved benefits like paid time off, but also things like apprenticeship programs in areas without any training with a focus on uh, expanded, deepening knowledge, deepening builder knowledge in specific scopes and digital literacy. Other things like hiring a translator to do live translations in meetings, ensuring more craft have assets, so having access to mobile devices, ensuring more craft have access to email addresses that they can log into their email addresses, access to streaming videos with model navigation and training in English and Spanish. Simple stuff, but all the minimum requirements for supporting the conversation and getting closer to connected construction all the way to the craft. With this training, our craft received nationally rec recognized cert certifications. We'll help them you know, get a GED and offer classes on English as a second language. This was the foundation for Jose. Before we found Jose, the hourly craft worker, a self-performed drywall project manager out of the Bay Area named Jose Gonzalez reached out with a chat message expressing interest 
and Revit training. In NorCal, they're hella into VDC. I briefly thought he might be the right Jose. DPR's Northwest region has been a shining example for well over a decade of elevating craft by training them up and modeling the scopes they self-perform and allowing foremen to take off their tool belt and transition into an office role. Some of the folks who have made that transition now drive robots to print layout instructions on the floor. These new and exciting tasks connect the model directly to the field. But these incredible examples are also limited. There are only so many models that need to be created and so many lines that need to be printed on the floor. The entire workforce isn't moving from the field to the office. Our skilled labor shortage is really driving us the other way. And a lot of the craft are focused more on making sure that they have a job the next week as opposed to saying, hey, I want a new or different one. By the way, this is the right Jose. Jose is an incredible sample of the potential construction workforce. Just like it's a ritual to lace up your boots and go walk the job, he made it a ritual to launch the model. Take a look. Make sure he has a continuous flow of work with less stress and a clear understanding of what comes next. That was his day to day. Finding Jose, for me, was an aha moment, a starting point for surrounding a super with a community of digitally literate builders in the field. But it's not just about Jose. Every Jose in every role from every walk of life needs to be connected. How can each one of us help ensure all the front end work makes it to the most important aspect, the actual built environment? And continue to find the Jose's, the Rogers, the Vicky's, and the Reyes, and the Dougs, the Pedros, and the Rons to be a part of this community of builders prepared and with all the tools they need to confront the challenges of the day. How do we create the most admired workflows for connected construction for every role? Why are we still in this business? The folks in this room, the technology players around us? Together, we can integrate VDC into how we work and make this a career choice that people choose every day to be a part of and to live in. I asked at the beginning about why we all chose this business. Why are you here? And we've been talking about how to make that choice a little easier for the next generation of builders. What can you do to create a connected community of builders ready to confront the challenges of the day with a smile? Now that's a business I want to be a part of. Thank you.